But welcome back. It's all the breakfast in Plus TV Africa. Um, well, as you've been having in the news uh, reports, even on the papers this morning, Nigeria uh, has uh, been once again scored uh, not too high and quite low. Uh, 24 points out of 100 points. If you look at that, if you write in an exam, I'm sure that will be an F. Uh, while ranking uh, 150 out of eight, 180 countries in the 2022 Corruption, per Corruption Perception Index annually released by Transparency International. It was released yesterday morning uh, while right, right here on set. Um, on the breakfast. So although the country maintained its previous ranking, last year's ranking score uh, of, um, uh, rather, its previous year's score of 2024, sorry, out of 100 points, there was a change in the rank last year. They were ranked 150. This year, Nigeria ranked 154. Um, rather, last year, Nigeria ranked 154. This year, 150 and the newly released index. Uh, so it means the country has gone a uh, four places up. Now, the Corruption Perception Index is a Transparency International's tool for measuring the level of uh, corruption in the systems of the 180 countries uh, across the world based on certain prevalent uh, indices, which you'll look at as we go. Now, what does this say about the fight against corruption in Nigeria? I'm glad to say joining us to analyze this is um, uh, the country manager of Accountability Lab, a uh, civil society organization in uh, the accountability space, uh, Ode Friday. Good morning to you. Thank you very much for your time. Morning. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. All right. Um, you were at the, the launch or the unveiling of this report uh, yesterday. Uh, I'll turn you into a journalist for just uh, a, a few minutes. What did Transparency International say at that, uh, at that unveiling of this this report. Um, thanks and good morning once again, Nigeria, um, for this opportunity. Um, but interestingly, it's I'm excited to be part of the the panelist who had the discussion for the Corruption Perception Index reports for Nigeria, who we'll have ranked um, to, we'll, we'll have like a score of twenty four, um, not necessarily moved up or or down as the case may be. Um, but we have moved um, four points from 154 last year to 150 out of 180 countries. Um, we, we as, as, as a technical working group for the Corruption Perception Index um, for, for the Nigerian office, um, one of the key things we have looked at designed by the Corruption Perception Index, this is more not like a perception of what Nigerians feel, but this is an assessment of eight indexes, which one of these is the World Bank um, Index, which um, which has been assessed and, um, to get the, the, the ranking for Nigeria. And one key thing we looked at is over the years, um, there's been pushback by the government on these issues um, as released by the Corruption Perception Index for the ranking. This is a global index, uh, um, and every country is being ranked according according to indexes which have been found out there in public sources, just to aggregate fee, fee, um the figures as the methodology provides for and see how progress has been made in the space of account in, in all the contexts around the world. Um, interestingly for, us, uh, for, for for the whole team was um, this shows the progress that has been made and how citizens perceive um, nothing is done across board. And to, to understand it's it's something that shows the country. If you look at the Western world, or if you look at the U.S., they are being ranked. If you look at U.K., so it's more around what has been done in terms of look at press conference, look at open budgets, look at other other characteristics that shows how Nigeria has performed, like how we handle high-profile corruption cases. Um, the, the subsidy regime, what has happened around the transparency around that. So. This has also fed back into the context of what happens on the corruption and perception index. Uh, are you there? Yes, okay. I think I lost you for a bit. Okay, yes, I think we have you back. So, yes, you can continue with the point you're making, please. So, uh, I was saying, like, the corruption aggregates data from eight different data sources, um, business. Which 
Nigeria was part of and globe they also kicked back and pushed back on the government every year this um, index has been released and um, which was how Nigeria performed how the government has how they have addressed the issue of press freedom how they've been building the accountability space um there's been much progress which has been done but too much activity which has been done around the context so if you look at other um, scandinavian countries they always come out like five of the countries in scandinavian in scandinavian, scandinavian region always come up, up at the top top 10 um, in, in the ranking. So if you look at the systems, you see open system, you see transparency systems, you see um, free freedom of press, um, you see the rule of law. All right, we seem to be having some difficulty with the, um, with the network connection. We'll try and reach out to him, and probably you will reconnect the Zoom, or we probably will um, place a phone call to him. Um, uh, Ode Friday, are you there? I can hear you clearly. Okay, fantastic. Um, you know, the, the government, you know, perennially, uh, annually, always uh, you know, pushes back on uh, Transparency International's um, Corruption Perception Index, uh, uh, on which Nigeria has consistently, for the past uh, decade or over a decade, ranked low. Um, one of the things that we usually would hear from uh, probably the Minister of Information is that um, it is not a ranking of corruption in the country but the perception of certain people or perception of some people out there about uh, how corrupt the country is that they don't go to take data on who stole what who stole what but they monitor things uh, in the media and take the perception of people out there on how corrupt countries are so if it, do you agree with that view and if so um is it is it adequate enough to be able to gauge how corrupt the country is with this report so I, I was just saying, for me, I, I strongly disagree with him um, because this is not a perception of what happens out there in the media. Um, though these are these are, are valid valid arguments which we can make on what happens around the progress being made by the current government who has promised um, to fight corruption. Well, uh, we we'll definitely put a phone call across uh, to our guests this morning, and hopefully we can have a smooth conversation. But the argument has always been whether the, you know, the reports and the perception is something to write him about. Is there a correlation? Is there a connection with what is reported and what it is? So if you look at Nigeria as a country. Now, we understand that uh, the president, uh, Buhari's administration, has been big on the, the fight against corruption. And is upon all of this argument that uh, this administration came on board. The fact that, hey, we will fight against corruption. But all through the period, you're almost going to see eight years now, uh, it hasn't been very pleasant. It feels like we have gone down uh, the statistics. Not entirely, you know, to the president, just like you have mentioned, because we have, I mean, Nigeria is not just centered around the president. It cuts across different parts, you know, of the country. So different sectors. There are too many indices or uh, yardstick, if you like to say, that are used to measure all of this. So when you look at it, really, is this a, a true reflection of who we are? Is this a true reflection of our country? Is that what it is? If you look at the uh, public sector, if you look at Nigerians, uh, basically, you just walk on the streets or in the course of transaction, just look at it in a holistic uh, manner. Is that what it is? Uh, these are some of the questions that we're hoping to get answers. Is this really, I mean, this statistics, this report, a true reflection of who we are? Ode Friday, it's good to have you join us once again. Can you hear us? All right, then. So, yes, this is what it is about. Uh, usually, uh, we've also had situations where the government would put out a different response. And some people will say government speak is a government speak situation where government is expected to respond to all of this. I mean, there's a body that's saddled with our responsibility, you know, to manage the image of the government uh, and, and what have you. But not entirely that, it, you know, it's on the president. But you look at the fact that if you say, uh, we're going to fight against corruption. We're going to ensure that that's... Ode Friday, can you hear us? No, so yeah, I can hear you. Please, can you go, go over the question again? So, so the question is, this report, I mean, the report that we have by uh, these agency, is this a true reflection of Nigeria? Um, 
Um, I would strongly agree that in the true reflection of Nigeria. Um, why I say that is because we've had, if you look at some of the, the, the pointing, um, where the finger points, um, we have um, strong, high-profile individual cases which have been part on uh, more like politically exposed persons, which, whose cases, um, if you look at the former governor of Taraba State, um, how the case was handled, if you look at high-profile um, corruption case, um, recovery of 30 billion from, from the former accountant general of the um, um, federation, also looking at the, the issue with the former um, acting chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, um, there are issues around the soft regime, the OSF, um, lack of accountability and transparency in the security sector, um, constituency projects by legislators, which um, lack every form of accountability, um, projects being implemented, which shows instead of using government funds for the people, they are being branded by uh, services being rendered by politicians which is totally not the situation. Um, we also have clearly, clear issues of judicial challenges, which we need to address. Um, the Nigerian judiciary has contributed to challenges faced in tackling corruption in Nigeria. This was highlighted in 2022, which saw numerous election-related court processes. Differently, uh, different politically exposed persons sought controversial orders from the courts to perpetrate actions which were against the public interest of citizens. So if you analyze all of this and look at the context of what the Corruption Perception Index would um, present, um, you would see that the ranking of Nigeria um, is, is not, we are not doing too well, but we, one of the things that the Corruption Perception Index produces or provides for is to see that the Nigerian government improves on accountability, good governance, and transparency, um, so we can all have the dividends of democracy and also handle the issue of mismanagement of public funds. Um, so this is what, for me, I feel um, the situation is. Um, this, uh, of course, uh, you've said that the, the CPI would enable government access itself and improve on uh, its processes and um, fight against corruption. Um, looking at the fact that in the 2022 Corruption Perception Index by the Transparency International, Nigeria scored 124 uh, points and ranked 154 out of 180 countries. Uh, having dropped several places down, about five places down the ranks from 2020. But in 2022, in the 2020 report, Nigeria has moved four places up from 154 uh, to, from 150 to 150, from 154 to 150, sorry. Um, would you say that uh, at least in the last 12 months, Nigeria has, uh, corruption has become, has reduced in the country? Let's keep it as simple as that. Um, so, very good question. Thank you. Just to provide a, a clarity, um, some clarity around how this works. Um, um, the, the, the report, Nigeria scored 24 out of 100 points. So, every country is based on a score. Um, Nigeria has scored 24 out of 100 points in the 2022 CPI, which means other countries, I'm not sure of the other countries, but other countries are also on that power of 24 points. But if you look at the ranking out of 104, 80 countries. Nigeria has ranked 150 out of 180 countries. In, in 2021, we ranked 154 out of um, um, 180 countries as well. But we have moved up the ranking. So up the ranking, when you talk about the, 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 the score, our score has been stagnant um, across 2021 and 2022, but we've moved up, meaning um, one being the highest. So the best country, according to the ranking, would be number one why the list would be number 80. So from 154 to 150 looks like good movement. But in the entirety, you still have those challenges which looks at um, part of the, part of the uh, progress has looked, we've looked at is the passage of key legislation, talking about the Electoral Act, talking about the Proceeds of Crime and Management Act 2022, and also the Money Laundering and Pre Prevention and Prohibition Act. Some of this um, legislation has also strengthened the system. Um, so there's been progress to see that legislations are there. But however, looking at the other side of it, the implementation of it is what we are also clamoring for and saying, for Nigeria to move up the rank and do better, we have to also put more effort to ensuring these are being implemented to ensure like, you know, we all have corruption around the world. Um, it's not something you can eliminate under, under 24 hours or even in a lifetime. But there should be progress according to implementation of laws which are there. But you have high-profile corruption cases 
um, a politically exposed person, which are always bending our laws. And, well, I'm not sure I want to delve into that, maybe another conversation, another day. But we need to strengthen and resolve that anti-corruption agencies can be strengthened despite, without, without political influence. So they can actually do their job. So one of the challenges is also the influence of um, politics that has to do with the anti to anti corruption fight. Um, yeah, for me, I think Nigeria has done good. Um, we can still do better in, in this situation. All right. Uh, uh, very quickly, before Messi comes, just a quick one. Um, the, the the current administration uh, led the APC led federal government. You know, uh, before it came into power, um, relied on I mean this uh, corruption perception uh, index, the data it presented. Uh, to fiercely criticize the then ruling People's Democratic Party led uh, federal government uh, in the campaigns of 2014. They were saying, look at how corrupt the country is, and they cited the CPI. But they've been in power, and uh, you know, it's an annual ritual that uh, um, Lai Mohammed, the Minister of uh, Information and Culture, would criticize the report and reject it. Um, what do Nigerians need to, to, to take, do with this report as far as the forthcoming elections are concerned in terms of? who they vote for at the various levels, and what do the candidates also need to do with this information as they prepare you know, for those who win to take the reins of power in 2023? Um, well, thank you. Very good question. I'm, I'm quite excited that you posed this question. And one of the foundations for me to also pose to Nigerians is looking at the 2023 election and the political candidates or polit uh, presidential aspirants who are out there. If you put all of them at the same power of which they are from across different political parties, you find little or none of them is even talking about accountability and this is a priority for development of Nigeria. Yes, we want a new Nigeria. We want um, to build new roads. We want to do education and health sector. You want them to improve. But we also have to tackle this issue of um, the CPI, some of the pointers which we have looked at. I'm not going to base this conversation just on the corruption perception index, but if you look at other um, other indexes or ranking across across the globe, there is the global justice um, global world justice project it talks about the glo um, um, what's it called now the it's, it's about the, the rule of law index. Sorry, the rule of law index. It looks at constraints of government powers, absence of corruption, open government, fundamental rights, order and security, regulatory enforcement civil justice and criminal justice, how Nigeria has fared across, um, across these indexes. And you look at that for the world just the rule of law index. Nigeria ranks 180, 118 out of 140 countries. If you move on to the next of the index of public integrity, Nigeria ranks 102 out of 114 countries. For the transparency index, Nigeria ranks 71 out of 129 countries. Nigeria, the Nigerian government needs to look closely at these indexes and how we can improve generally. Um, when we talk about these issues, they are based on foundational issues. We can all see mismanagement of funds. We can all see the oil subsidy um, regime, the fuel subsidy, and all of that. You can all see um, what has happened across um, um, government institutions, how, how they need to be strengthened to we actually implement their mandate. But political influences has also reduced the value which we find in this organization. So it's imperative like, to see that Nigerians need to pull, push through for 2023 to ensure for accountability is a foundation for most of our conversations to ensure that the Nigeria we want, the Nigeria we all want to see, the development we want to see, the events of democracy is found in some of these commitments. Um, Manifestos for political candidates on another conversation for another day. But yes, accountability, transparency, and good governance should be the foundation, the foundational discussion for 2023 and how we should approach issues um, going forward. The corruption in special perception index is one of those indexes or one of those rankings globally which shows like more work needs to be done and more effort needs to be put into um, fighting corruption. We have to go now, but just quickly, I'd like you to speak to what the impact of this report is on the ongoing fight. I mean, as long as we have President Mohamed Buhari as president, then the fight against corruption is ongoing. So what exactly is the impact of this report on the fight against corruption? 
Um, like you mentioned earlier, over the years, the Nigerian government has always had a pushback for the Corruption Perception Index report, which has been released on a yearly basis. Um, um, and for me, I just feel this is an opportunity. Um, in 2021, we had the Ministry of Justice who had responded to some of the findings. In previous years, like you mentioned, in um, 2019, 2015, these were basic foundations to improving our system. Um, but now it looks like a back and forth um, argument with two friends who are fighting. But yes, the Corruption Perception Index just pre provides an opportunity for improvement in systems, in strengthening systems and structures. And, and we all agree that we have weak institutions in Nigeria. This is an opportunity for Nigeria and the Nigerian government to put more effort, effort to improving systems. Um, in 2021, like I was trying to say before, the Ministry of Justice has re uh, responded to some of these issues and the progress they had made. So if you look at the progress they have made, they can talk about activities being done, but not the impact that has been made. So for instance, we have put in um, policies, um, like for instance, the Code of Conduct Degree. You, you want it to actually work around um, uh, what's it called, asset declaration, but we've not seen much progress in that. But once you put forth argument that we've done ABCD, we need to see what the results are. So. Issues like the former governor of Taraba State, issues like the, the former chairman, acting chairman of ESC. We as Nigerians actually want to see what the feedback and what how this affects our national engagement or daily activities. So for me, this opportunity is an opportunity for the Nigerian government to strengthen the system um, across um, the MDAs, across um, governance in general, to see that we have functional and independent institutions who can deliver the mandates of their service. Right. Uh, thank you so much, Ode Friday, Country Director, Accountability Lab. Uh, sorry about the uh, initial um, network challenges, uh, but we look forward to having you again on the program. And please keep up the good work. Thank you very much, and have a good one. Thank you. All right. And that's uh, the size of that discussion. Quite interesting, uh, Mercy. Um, the fact that Nigeria is doing better, and he's giving uh, some kudos to the country on some of the initiatives being put in place. But of course, um, we're still scoring 24 out of 100. I think that is an F in the examination, right? Yes, it is. Okay. All right. It's not even yeah. close to an E. Oh, wow. All really? right, then. All well, right. that's the anyway. size of it. We take a break when we <laughs> return. We'll be looking at, you know, the issue of uh, suicide, uh, the rate at which people are taking their lives. What exactly could be responsible? And how can we help to control all of that? Is it even possible? Stay with us.